this has been going around all over the internet. Um, the uh, it's it's really only the the people are kind of focusing on um, the last thirty seconds of this video. So I wanted to go through the whole fucking thing because the whole fucking thing is crazy, right? It's like an eighteen minute interview, and we're uh, and I and I wanted to watch it all uh, with you guys and kind of do some commentary in between. Um, so here's what I'm going to ask you guys. While we're watching this, you guys can leave comments, and I encourage you guys to leave comments because intermittently I'm gonna I'm gonna stop and come back and read your comments and respond to them as we do uh, during these live streams. Uh, while we're watching the video, I probably won't be looking at the comments too much, but I do have some spots where I will stop. We'll come back, read some comments, and go right back into the video. So I encourage you guys to leave some comments. Uh, be cool to if, if you guys are responding to each other in the comment section, uh, be good to each other. Don't be dicks. Be respectful to each other. Everybody has their opinions, their beliefs. Uh, some people might be pro Biden. Some people might be anti Biden. Some people might be anti Biden, but still choose to vote for him. So we got to be respectful to each other. Uh, and um, everybody has their reasons for making the decision that they do. But the goal here is to look at sort of the accuracy of what actually happened in these interview in, in, in this interview, right? So um, uh, Biden went on the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne de God. Uh, not super familiar with Charlemagne if uh, my, myself. Uh, I'm I'm unfamiliar with it. I want to say Joe Biden's kind of unfamiliar with Charlemagne. <laughs> I gotta say I think Joe Biden's probably unfamiliar with Charlemagne as well. And like I said, this thing has been going around the internet um, for, you know, fucking the, the, the last day and a half. That's all that's all people have been talking about is is the last 30 seconds of this interview. And the last 30 seconds of this interview were bad, but the whole fucking thing is pretty terrible, you guys. So I wanted to kind of dive into how terrible this whole this whole thing is. All right, so we're gonna watch this thing. If you if if you guys can't hear it, um, leave a comment. Leave a comment if you can't hear it. I'll I'll run it for a bit and then I'll come back and check on that. Um, and and here we go. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. What? This is the greatest introduction of all time, you guys. Wake that ass. That's the best introduction. I feel like. Uh, I feel like all that's just, I don't think any other show has ever had a better introduction than <laughs> this right here. So, okay, let's keep going. President Biden, how are you today? Good. Good to see you. Same here. You know, you know I've been critical of you. Um, I, I have a few things I want to talk to you about. Today. I know you have. Yeah. You don't know me. No, I don't. That's why I want to get to know you today. I want to get to know you today. Um, I want to talk to you about mostly black stuff. But, you know, first of all, how are you? How's your family during this quarantine? Thank God everybody's doing well. How about you and your family? Man, we over here blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Well, I tell you what, the black community is getting killed, though. That is very, very true. That is very true. Um <laughs> Charlamagne's trying to keep it light. You know, he's like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? How's your family? And <laughs> immediately Biden's just like, hey, black people are dying. Do you know that? Do you, are you aware? Does he keep? Yeah, we know Joe. We're, I'm just trying to get through the pleasantries. Like, I like how you uh, how immediately he turns the pleasantries into a death toll. Thirty seconds into this interview, thirty seconds into this interview, he just turned it into a death toll. Like, look, I perform like very long form essayistic uh, comedy that talks about like these really dark, depressing issues and shit. And and um and I do and I do have some dark jokes in my in my set, but you gotta ease people into it. You can't just go right in, right? You got to ease people into some of the darkness. And uh, and Joe Biden was just like, yeah, no, we're not. I'm just going to go. Black people are dying. You, are you aware, Charlemagne? <laughs> just like, yeah, man. Just to maybe I'm good is all we need. And then we can start this interview where, where the interview needs to start. Oh, man. He's just a... Uh, I mean, here's the thing. It's like he's not wrong, right? There is a disproportionate amount of death uh, within the within communities of color, uh, and I am going to talk about that uh, later in this video as as well. But that, that that is just like the dude's just trying to be nice and get through like your pleasantries, and he was like, "Death, how about that? You want to just jump right in?" It's like maybe give it a minute. 
Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot of right wing media outlets. They, they question you. They question your cognitive health. They don't they don't think <laughs> they don't think everything's working upstairs. What, what do you say to that? I said I can hardly wait to meet with that guy who is the stable genius. <laughs> There's nothing stable about that guy. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think either of them are stable. Like, neither one of them are stable. Like, Donald Trump is not stable. And once we start watching this interview, uh, the deeper we go into this interview, the more we can see that Joe Biden is super fucking not stable, which I don't think is... Like, if you regularly watch my videos, like, that is not a surprising statement. Like, if you're a first-time viewer of this video, this might be like, oh, okay, cool. either you agree with me or or you don't. But, you know, like, I've been saying this for a long time. It's like Biden is not stable, but neither is Trump, right? Like, Trump is not a stable individual either. Like, there's an interview that uh, on, on the Joe Rogan podcast with, uh, with journalist Matt Taibbi, uh, who is a great journalist. I highly recommend his work. He writes for the Rolling Stone right now, and he does a podcast called Useful Idiots with Katie Halper. And uh, he talks about how, like, Trump might be doing amphetamines. And, and that's, that's, like, that's when you get the most bombastic versions of Trump. Um, so I, I kind of think that's true. I kind of think the reason why Trump doesn't, like, he babbles in a different way. You know, like Joe Biden has difficulty getting thoughts out. Um, and there are several reasons. I think I think he's he's ha he has a really hard time of like really learning how to filter himself. Um, but with Trump, it's just like the other, he just babbles and lets it all out. So it's just there's no control over what they're doing. Uh, so neither one of them is <laughs> are stable people. So. All right. Let's uh, I'm going to double check to make sure. This is okay. Yeah, this is still coming through. All right, here we go. This is a bit of bit, bit we're gonna let it run for a bit more. You know, one, one, one thing I've been critical about is I feel like you've been like MIA during this global pandemic. You know, it's people like Governor Cuomo here in New York who have become political stars simply because we see and hear from them every day. So I'm just, I'm just like, how I'm, I'm wondering how you're gonna energize people and win a campaign from the house. Well, I tell you what, I'm doing, I'm, I'm following the rules, man. True. Number one, I'm keeping the rules. My governor says he doesn't want us out. I haven't been out. I wear my mask. I have a mask. I got Secret Service outside. I walk outside. I have it on. They get tested. And by the way, I'm beating them across the board mm -hmm. of 160 million people who watched me so far on shows like yours. Okay. All the stuff about it hurting me. It's not hurting me. I'm winning in all those states. I'm ahead in all the national polls. And uh, the more he talks, the better off I am. Yeah, we, we know polls polls can be illusions, though. Like, you know, we, we looked at all the polls in 2016, too, and look what happened. Totally different, man. 2016 is totally different. What you had then is you had somebody who didn't, they didn't know it all. They wanted to just change the system the way it was. He was the biggest change. He had no serious opposition that turned out to materialize. And uh, so it's totally different. Right now, we're in a situation where it's like, you know, that Carney show goes through town once and you find out there's no pee under any one of those three shells that get pushed around. Mm -hmm. Next time it comes back, what do you do? Next time it comes back, you ain't playing. You got to figure it out. Okay. And let me tell you something. My community figured it out a while ago. But here's... <laughs> uh I'm pretty sure his community is uh, is the donor class. And the reason why the donor class hates Donald Trump is because Donald Trump exposes everything corrupt about the donor class. That's why they don't fucking like Trump. You know, uh, all of their secrets are exposed with this guy. Again, the, the guy, the dude doesn't have a fucking filter. So he just goes off and spouts some crazy bullshit. You know, it's like, oh, he heard some quote and then he doesn't understand what the quote is. And then he just blurts it out into a speech. It's just like, what the fuck is happening? Um, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not making an excuse for it. I'm saying that's what it is. That's that that's sort of the way that Donald Trump operates. It's, it's, and we know that about him. And that's why that's that's why the donor class doesn't like him. He's too bombastic as an individual. Now, he talks about polls. Uh, right. He's he's beating Donald Trump in all these polls all over the place. And Charlemagne points out that the polls could be skewed. The polls can be can come off. Uh, um, uh, you know, all, all the polls ke kept saying that Hillary was going to win. And then and then look what happened. 
Um, you know, so so where's the fervor and the excitement? But here's the here here's the interesting thing, right? Is Joe Biden's talking about polls all of a sudden? Is every single poll, every single poll during the primary said that Bernie could beat Trump? I mean, there was virtually no poll when that 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 they ran that that didn't show Bernie not beating Trump, right? Bernie was beating Trump through and through in all these polls and the media fucking ignored it. Joe Biden ignored it. The pr everybody that was covering the primary, except for like the, the more progressive channels, the alternative channels that kind of get censored a whole lot. Like corporate media didn't cover that fucking at all. Um, he also does uh, point out that uh, because 2016 was different, that Trump is a reaction. Trump is a reaction to, uh, to the status quo that was in place. And that status quo is what Joe Biden represents. So he acknowledges that it's a reaction to the status quo, which is what Joe Biden is. And it's just like he doesn't put the pieces together. Or maybe he does put the pieces together and he's not going to fucking say it. Um, he meant, uh, Charlemagne mentioned Andrew Cuomo. Uh, Andrew Cuomo is a corporate shill. He is, you know, he's not somebody that, that everybody should be should be championing the way that they do. There are, a lot of people are kind of fawning over Andrew Cuomo right now. And the dude's a corporate shill that destroyed Medicaid in the state of New York. He cut it by $900 billion. Uh, he cut hospital beds because they were unused, right? Like unused right before a global pandemic. Um, and, and that's what happens in a profit-driven um, uh, healthcare system is, is you look at beds and you go, well, we have this for this X, Y, Z situation, but we're not in an X, Y, Z situation. So let's just get rid of them. Um, and then once you're in the X, Y, Z situation, he, you do what Andrew Cuomo does where you complain, Oh, there, these beds are gone and look at these nurses. And like most nurses that I've heard interviews from, uh, are, are basically like you, you fucked us, you put us in this situation. And now you're, now you're trying to capitalize on, on that. Now you're flipping your position. Um, he, he basically cut, he did that. He cut Medicaid to balance the books, but he balanced the books in order to make sure that rich people don't have to pay taxes in the state of New York so that they keep coming and owning vacation homes in the Finger Lakes, right? Like that's basically what he did, but he can put a coherent sentence together and he sounds mildly professional and everybody is like, oh, my God, this guy is like a uh, like our savior. He's a God amongst men. It's like you can put you can string a fucking sentence together with like a noun and a verb and maybe a couple adjectives. And everybody is just like, this guy's incredible. Like, where are we as a society when when just basic sentence structure is something that we have to tout as this incredible, amazing over the top thing that that these people are, are 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 champions in our society just because they can string a fucking sentence together is the bar really that fucking low well i guess with joe biden being the presidential nominee on the democratic side it kind of is it kind of is you know what the, the real problem is is like i we just don't know what real leadership looks like in this country Right. Like we have we have people like Joe Biden and Andrew Cuomo. Those are our examples of of what real leadership looks like um, or, or what we perceive real leadership to look like. Every time a real leader steps up, every time a leader that is willing to fight for the working class steps up, uh, they end up getting killed by the intelligence community in the donor class. <laughs> they automatically get assassinated. That's what happens. So then people just latch on to these you know, minor celebrity politicians that end up becoming the flavor of the campaign for a while. And, and then everybody goes, look at how great he is. He said the day of the week and he wasn't confused about it. And it's just like, great. <laughs> That's it. What about his policies? It doesn't matter. He says sentence is real nice. It's, it's kind of sad and upsetting. Anyway. As we continue, here's the deal. What I have to do is I have to continue to talk about the things that matter. And the things that matter are, for example, right now there's a study out of Columbia University and the disease control center up there. They pointed out that if he had listened to me and others and acted just one week earlier to deal with this virus, 
there'd be 36,000 fewer people dead, dead, mm. dead. And you guys are wondering, what are we, what's he doing? Come on, man, get a life, get a life. This guy has been. Okay, he sounds real stable here, right? Dead, dead, dead. Like this is, this is the, 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 the definition of stability here. <laughs> He just sounds like this angry old white dude. Do you guys remember how everybody used to shit on Bernie Sanders for sounding like an angry old white dude? Like every single time that they went on corporate media, nobody could really touch his policies. Nobody could really touch the ideas, but they would be like, well, you know, he's just, he's just, just kind of like this angry old man. You know, he's just kind of, he's just up there and he's saying these, uh, saying these things and he's just, he's just angry. You know, where, where, where are all those people now with, with him? Look at that image right there. Does that look like somebody that is calm, that knows how to express their emotions in a way where people can understand what that is? Or does it just sound like he's outpouring all of this shit? You know, where where is the media addressing this? Where is corporate media addressing this? Where the fuck is Claire McCaskill getting on MSNBC talking about how Joe Biden just, just yelled the word dead three times at a black man? <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's the media report on that? You you won't fucking see it, folks. You won't fucking see it. Let's continue down the rantings of this old man. Incredibly terrible. And what what we've had is, you know, back in when uh, in January, I said I wrote an article back in I think the 27th of January. Said this pandemic's here. We should act. Every other country that was acted around the time got, got the notice around the time we did. They have considerably fewer deaths as a percent of the population. I'm the guy that said we ought to take hard records and find out exactly how many people in the black community are getting COVID and are dying from it. And look what's happened. Now everybody's going, oh, surprise, surprise. Look, everybody knows this. We have to come back. We have to fight back. And you know, the crisis lays laying bare the institutional racism that's still prevalent in our society. And I believe we have to address it by transforming our economy and this time bringing everybody along. And we haven't, look, he started to undermine the pillars of his economy before. But look, the blinders, Charlemagne, it might have been taken off. Okay. Now people recognize that those essential workers, a disproportionate amount of them are African Americans and they're breaking their necks, risking their lives losing their lives. They're grocery store workers, they're bus drivers, they're delivery people, they're the people who are on the line. They are the they're, they're he they're the healthcare workers who are in a position where they're taking care of the nurses. I mean, and, and they're making basically the minimum wage. So this time when we come back, if we had not only rebuild, move this along, we not only rebuild, but we have to transform this economy. We can create millions of new jobs in transportation, energy structure, we can, there's jobs, a, a job is a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about how you treat it. It's about having purpose in your life. It's about creating an economic system that would do that. Right. And we've talked about this uh, on, on this channel and these videos is that universal basic income would be a way that you would be able to do that. And I've made a lot of different arguments about that. Um, and there are several videos that you can go watch where, where I talk about why universal basic income would do exactly what Joe Biden's talking about, where, where, where your job becomes about me finding meaning and purpose and respect and dignity. And a job is just more about the, more, more than just doing a job. But, uh, Joe Biden would never approve something like universal basic income. Joe Biden would never uh, approve something like Medicare for all. In fact, he said so. He has straight up said that if Medicare for all comes to his desk, he will veto it. Now, these are all very nice things, right? And Charlemagne talked about how he disappeared during this crisis. And he did. I think there was a couple of weeks where he just like, like nobody knew where he was. Uh, and I think his team was like, we're trying to figure out how to make the things work. And it's just like, dude, I figured out I'm a fucking nobody that doesn't have a team to do shit. And I figured out a bunch of shit. Like I figured out how to do live streams from my bedroom. Like that's, you know, it's like, it's not, 
I'm sure there's somebody on your team that can set some shit up for you. And I'm sure Joe Biden has a far larger budget than I do to do it. Right. And I'm a fucking nothing and a nobody somewhere in, in, in you know, in the uh, Western side of Pennsylvania to figure this shit out. And there's tons of other comedians that did the same thing. <laughs> and, and these are all very nice things that Joe Biden is saying. They're all very nice things that Joe Biden is saying, but that's all they are. It's just words that he says because he might have read them in an article or, or something along those lines, or his team has, has said, this is the angle you should take in interviews. Uh, but he hasn't done dick all to make any of this stuff happen on a legislative level. He hasn't, he hasn't done that at all. He hasn't pushed any sort of legislative change to transform, uh, transform the nature of jobs. He hasn't, he hasn't supported the strikes he hasn't supported any of the worker strikes that are going on out there. He has he he hasn't a, a pushed back against people like Jeff Bezos, the Waltons, Bill Gates, Tim Cook. None of those people. All of the uh, like all these companies, like the CEO of Instacart, he hasn't pushed back on any of that. And he sure as shit hasn't gone up to his Republican buddies because he talks about unity and reaching across the aisle and and making compromises. Well, yeah, he makes compromises for corporations all the time, but he doesn't make any compromise for the average American voter. He doesn't make any compromise for you or me, right? It's just not a thing that he does, right? It is not a thing that he does. And, you know, that's part of the problem is you can say a lot of really nice things and a lot of politicians do, but if they're not going to put any legislative backing behind it, why would we support any of their ideas? It's kind of the way that I've used this. It's, it's a lot of platitudes and he's saying some very nice things and he's saying some things that I listened to this interview and I was like, yeah, a lot of the things you're saying are, yeah, I'm, I, I got you, but you ain't putting any action behind it. That's not what your record shows. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's how we built the from the working class to the middle class. But this time, we have to address the institutional racism. We've seen it more clearly now. In a, in a black majority mm -hmm. county, they're six times more likely to die in a pandemic than a white county. They're disproportionately uninsured in the African-American community, disproportionately make up the essential jobs that that they can't do at home. They're risking their lives every day. Enough's enough. And this Biden recovery I'm gonna to put together will bring everybody along. I'm gonna build a better, a better future, not back to what we had, but a better, back to something better than we had. I wanna I wanna reiterate what he just said. Back to something better than what we had. Again. Remember how he claims that he is mentally stable? What he just said doesn't make any sense. If that's the thing that they're running at, back to something better than what we had. It doesn't make any sense. You just, it, you, you might as well come out and just be like, time is a flat disc. That's my economic plan. Time is a flat disc. That's how we're going to move forward. Biden 2020, time is a flat disc. All of my plans, time is a flat disc. That's, Back to something better than what we had. What? It doesn't make any sense. And, I, and but he's but he's in this like ranty raid spiral about this stuff because Charlemagne questioned his record. He questioned the fact that Joe Biden disappeared. Joe Biden disappeared and nobody knew where he went. And Joe Biden doesn't really seem to have a plan on how he would attack the pandemic, what he would have done. He just says a bunch of shit about like, well, look at the things that Trump didn't do. Where the fuck were you? Where the fuck? You're a senator. <laughs> like, the, what legislations were you putting forward? Where were you talking to Mitch McConnell? I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, I don't know if you saw a couple weeks ago, um, Sean Combs, you might, you might know him as Diddy. Diddy, yeah. You know? He said what I believe a lot of black voters, including myself, feel, and that's that Democrats take black voters for granted. You know, um, votes are quid pro quo, right? It's not like I don't want to vote. I just want to know what candidates will do for us in exchange for our votes. The same way young progressive Latinos or the LGBT community. Absolutely. Students, we want the same thing. Do you feel like black people are owed that from the Democratic Party? Absolutely, Bob. What did I say? Remember when I said Biden can't win the primaries? Yes. I kicked everybody's ass. I, excuse me. 
I don't won. talk like that. I need you to say that. You did no, what? No. I won overwhelmingly. I told you when I got to South Carolina, I won every single county. I won a larger share of the black vote than anybody has, including Barack. I <laughs> <laughs> including Barack, you guys. All right. That's right. Joe Biden just made a weird brag about how he might be blacker than Barack. <laughs> just like black people like me better than the first black president. Come on, baby. I beat that black dude. <laughs> like, what? Oh, man. Great still, I got to say. I, um, not, to, not, not to do a weird brag on myself there, but that's a fucking great still, isn't it? Uh, all right. Increase the vote in Virginia overwhelmingly by 70%. Look, what people don't know about me is I come from a state as the eighth largest black population in America, the eighth largest. I get 96% of that vote for the last 40 years. It's, they're, they're the folks, as they say it my way, brung me to the dance. That's how I get elected every single time. And everybody's shocked. I get overwhelming support from the black leadership, young and old. Every poll shows me way ahead. And it's not just, I hear this, oh yeah, old blacks are with Biden, but young aren't. Look at the polling data. Polling data, let's say it's off by half. Come on, man. Give me a little break here. Yes, everybody. We have to, we have to give Joe Biden a break. We got to cut this guy some slack. You know, he's, he is struggling out there in his multi-million dollar boomer cave with 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 his his secret service all around him and and the and the access to to federally covered health care and testing and treatment that he's getting look it has been weeks weeks since joe biden has been able to cut medicare for all for people weeks till he could look at a poor person in the play in the face and say he is not going to give them health care gotta cut him some slack you guys uh but <laughs> before we keep going i, I do want to take a look at um uh, look at some of these comments. <laughs> we got a few. Uh, Andrew Edelman. Uh, I don't think I could ever have the knowledge of hospital management that you see. Andrew, I'm getting that information from a few uh, interviews that I've seen on some progressive channels, progressive news outlets uh, over the last two months. Uh, they have interviewed hospital workers, nurses, doctors, uh, researchers, and hospital staff themselves. Uh, Democracy Now! has had a couple of them. And I'm I'm on and off uh, on that show, um, uh, I, but that's where I am uh, getting uh, the information from. But that's all I have, right? I I I don't personally know a whole lot of nurses or doctors that are currently working, or if I do, I've uh, I did I've, I've missed them unfortunately. Um, so that's where I'm getting that information from. But from from what it seems like is a lot of people don't like Andrew Cuomo. Uh, because he cut Medicare, for, be, be, Medicaid. He cut he cut Medicaid and he cut hospital beds, uh, which is a pretty pretty shit thing to do, in my opinion. Especially especially in the time of a, a global pandemic. Um, intelligence community gets harassed on by a lot of our presidents in history. Uh, that's why when briefing Trump, mean <laughs> mean bring bring a coloring book and an extra set of crayons. Uh, sometimes it depends. I don't know. I feel like there's been a lot of presidents that have worked pretty much in tandem with the intelligence community. Uh, Obama worked very closely with the intelligence community. That's what Edward Snowden revealed. The NSA was spying on them, and, the, and he expanded the uh, surveillance program uh, uh, under there. We, we definitely know that the Bush administration was working with the intelligence community. Uh, that's basically what the whole uh, debacle with the uh, Iraq was. Uh, the Daddy Bush was definitely working with the intelligence community. That dude was... Um, that dude was uh, the director of the CIA before he became the VP to Reagan and then became the president of the United States. Clinton was probably also working pretty closely with the intelligence community. Um, and to your point, <laughs> that's why when briefing Trump um, uh, mean bring a coloring book to, and an extra set of crayons, uh, I think Trump kind of listens to Pompeo now. If you, if you remember... Um, Pompeo was the director of the CIA in 2017. When when Trump was inaugurated, Pompeo was the director of the CIA. And that's whenever Donald Trump learned what the deep state was 
and went on went just and just shit on the deep state constantly and then all of a sudden the former director of the the cia is the secretary of state that that's a little fishy to me right uh and again this is like this is exposed that's why they that's why a lot of people in the donor class don't like trump is because he's sort of exposing all of their cracks none of this stuff is done behind closed doors in a smoke-filled room it's it's now still in a smoke-filled rooms but the windows are open and there's a couple people and, and the door is unlocked so we can kind of peek in to see what the fuck is going on um you know so uh the intelligence community is not i i i, I don't know uh, i gotta disagree with you that, that they get harassed by uh, a lot of presidents. Reagan was in, working in tandem with the intelligence. Nixon was 100% working in tandem with the intelligence community. Look at what happened to um, the, the the Vietnam whistleblower, uh, Daniel. Uh, oh shoot! If somebody remembers the the Vietnam whistleblower's name, the name is escaping me right now. Uh, please leave it in the uh, in in the in the comment section there. Uh, because the the name is escaping me for some reason, but I I, I, will, I will have to disagree to say that they get harassed on a lot. Uh, Jay Jackson, very funny comedian. Please, people should be following Jay. People should be, this. He is a man of several talents: uh, musician, comedian, actor, uh, developing a, a, a video game. Uh, full endorsement for Jay Jackson right here. <laughs> um, it also strikes me. Uh, that Joe's manner in this video is different and more, I'll say, less professional than what I would expect from a national candidate. Maybe it's just me, but it feels like he's trying too hard to relate to Charlemagne and his black audience. It's inauthentic. I agree. Uh, I think I think you 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 pretty much nailed exactly what I feel like um, is the issue with this video and the way that it, his demeanor is present is he is trying to relate I, or I, I think he's trying to attempt to relate to the black community and he's not doing a great job. Um, it, it just kind of looks, it, to me, it's just, I'm just like, why are you yelling at Charlemagne? <laughs> as, uh, as someone who's prone to tangential thought while speaking extemporaneously, I get off topic, but this is something entirely else. Biden is uh, always been gaff prone, but now there's an added factor. He's clearly sunsetting and has been for a while. What floors me is the insistence from the Democratic faithful that everything is fine when it's so blatantly and obviously not. Yeah, I, you know, they started doing this a while back, I remember, where CNN and MSNBC refused to cover anything um, about, um, Jay, um, um, about Joe Biden's fucking like, mental fortitude. Like They just stopped bringing it up. Um, and anytime they brought it up, anytime anybody brought it up, they would just fucking take him off the air. So, you know, I'm, I, they, they are trying to kind of um, close the door on it, which I think is why Charlemagne might have started the interview the way he did. Again, he's kind of getting them comfortable so that he would just talk about it a little bit more. Pittsburgh does sound like uh, something they serve at a 24-hour <laughs> dive bar served by a crusty waitress named Diane with a lit cigarette in her mouth. That's like my favorite dive bar you just described. <laughs> <laughs> Biden 2020, same shit, different day. Yeah, I feel like that that covers it. That covers it. Uh, William, thank you for watching, William. Uh, Biden's past can destroy him. Bernie's past is better. That's why I voted by mail and voted for Bernie Sanders. I would vote. Uh, I would vote for Biden if I have to, just to beat Trump. Uh, I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot, uh, and uh, I, I'm I'm not one to vote or shame anybody. Um, I just can't do it. I just can't. I, I just can't vote for the dude. His record's just too bad. And um, I saw a tweet today by uh, Jenk Uger from the uh, Young Turks, um, and I think he's running for Congress still. Where he said he would work to push Biden to the left, and um, I don't think the dude's going to move. I don't think he has any interest in moving. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Jay Jackson, oh, he could fuck all the way off mentioning South Carolina and, and Virginia. Like that's the only place black people live. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's classic Biden. <laughs> Daniel Ellsberg. Thank you, Jay and Dolores Pentagon papers. Daniel Ellsberg is the, uh, the whistleblower, uh, almost, almost got, um, like uh, over a hundred years in prison. 
for for what he revealed. So um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. The hive mind comes together again. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please give it a like and please subscribe to my channel for uh, for more. There's going to be daily videos going up uh, on this channel. Uh, I am also uh, going to be performing virtual live stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, I've done a couple of these and they've been super, super fun. So thank you to all the people that have already purchased tickets and uh, come out to these shows on a regular basis. They're, they're pretty fun. I'm going to be doing them every single Friday in the month of June. Tickets are available for those right now on my website at krishmohan.com. So it's June 5th, June 12th, June 19th, and June 26th going at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, if you're in the other time zones, I think you can figure out what, what time that <laughs> these shows are going to be on. Uh, they are going to be, each show is going to be a little bit different. They're going to be covering topics like the one uh, in the video that you just watched. Uh, again, you can grab your tickets at krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N every Friday at June, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and uh, if you are a sustaining member, you get a free ticket to every single one of these shows. Uh, and you can become a sustaining member over uh, on my website as well. And uh, I know I know times are tough, uh, so if you are in a financially precarious situation, please send me a message uh, or an email, and I will happily give you a code that will get you a, uh, a free ticket to attend these shows. Uh, I'm also releasing my brand new stand-up comedy album, which if you're a sustaining member, you get an early, uh, early release version of, early, uh, early copy of. Uh, it is available on my Bandcamp page to pre-order right now, and it comes out June 1st. So you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com, get, uh, get your copy of it uh, for only a dollar. You can pre-order it for only a buck. If you want to donate a little bit more, that would be awesome as well. Uh, there are more videos like this coming up. I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, a bunch of live streams pretty regularly from my Facebook page and uploading and releasing videos via the YouTubes and uh, and the, on the audio podcast versions as well. So stay tuned. Make sure that you like, make sure that you share, and make sure that you're subscribed to these pages because content like this often gets uh gets suppressed so uh thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for hanging out and uh till the next one we'll see you on the road thanks